Our next speaker is a theater maker based in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, who, thanks to High Performance Rodeo, is visiting us here in Calgary. His work focuses on creating new ways of being together while shedding light on how it is we've grown apart. Give a warm welcome to Dustin Harvey. Hi everyone, I'm Dustin. I am a theater maker who lives and works in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and I have been invited here to Calgary by Oliver and the Rabbits for the High Performance Rodeo, which I am grateful for, and I highly recommend you check out after this event. <laughs> now, like I said, I make theater, but the theater I make often blurs the lines between performer and audience, like this. It's a project called How Quickly Things Change, and it's a life story told through a constant costume quick change in which the audience becomes the background performers. The feeling of everyone on stage together is pretty spectacular. But today, I want to talk to you about something I find even more spectacular, <laughs> boredom. <laughs> now, if you find yourself bored by this presentation at any point, that's okay. <laughs> just do me a favor and let your mind wander. Don't grab your phone, just allow yourself to drift. Think of it as a gift. You're welcome. <laughs> now, I got curious about boredom because of the Situationists, a group of radical art philosophers who lived in Paris in the 60s. The Situationists were led by Guy Debois, who critiqued how modern life was a society of the spectacle, where authentic experiences were replaced by representations, like taking an Instagram photo over enjoying the moment. Now, Debois believed that our social lives were becoming commodified, influencing our relationships. This idea of the spectacle means we care more about how life looks than how it truly feels. Now, the Situationists didn't have smartphones or social media, yet they were both very smart and social. <laughs> Debord and the Situationists practiced the concept of the derive, or drift, as one way to disrupt the spectacle. Engaging in derive means setting aside all your usual motives and letting the environment and random encounters guide you. Think of it as getting lost on purpose. Now, the concept of derive can be applied to any situation. It's about breaking free from the information <laughs> overload. <laughs> Detourment is another way of countering the spectacle. It's about claiming ownership over an image and repurposing it like this. But could boredom be our gateway to disrupting a different kind of spectacle? In today's world, a form of digital spectacle creates a paradox for many of us. On the one hand, our social lives are dominated by images tailored to get and keep our attention. On the other, we are the ones who curate those images. In a way, it's the spirit of the situationists reimagined for new eras. Consider the bad blood that emerges when you shake it off from your digital devices. Is the feeling of emptiness a blank space? A pause for something new? An anti-hero? But maybe there's another layer to consider. How can this duality, this digital spectacle, also foster new forms of community and connection? Are you ready for it? I spent the last 10 years trying to buy a coffee maker. I still haven't bought one. However, I started watching experts on YouTube and reading opinions on Reddit whenever I was bored. I stumbled into a digital community of coffee enthusiasts and it made me feel connected and caffeinated. <laughs> it also made me wonder if the search for authenticity in today's digital world is as much an inward journey as it is outward. Like playing a citrus game of drift, there's a potential for unexpected encounters if we just allow ourselves to be bored. Now, my boredom with traditional theater led me to create Secret Theater, named after the big secret theater next door. Now, Secret Theater aims to disrupt the conventional theater context in which an audience observes a performance by having them play a part. In essence, the audience is the performance. Let me show you what I mean. Farewell is a goodbye party for a city. It takes place in a disused storefront on a busy street corner. We transform the street front windows into a live video backdrop. Then we perform a series of slow motion Hollywood goodbyes to a hidden camera outside for an audience watching inside. 
Landline is another example. Using smartphones, participants are invited to play a dual role of audience and performer in an audio-guided experiential walking tour. Each audience member is partnered with a fellow audience member in a different city, and as the experience unfolds, individuals are prompted to exchange their stories, memories, and secrets. How quickly things change, the show I started the talk with. It uses a camera to transform the performance into a music video. This camera attempts to capture time whereas the live performance is fleeting. At the end, we watch the video we created together and experience a feeling of longing or instant nostalgia. Now these projects attempt to share ownership with the audience and repurpose it as a metaphor for co-creating the world we want to live in. Our new project, Awake and Still Drowning, is about the world we don't want to live in. The performance splits the audience into two groups. The first group becomes the protagonist, a flock of little white seabirds. This group performs a simple choreography directed by their smartphones, which depicts the rising oceans and the disappearing shoreline of Nova Scotia. The second group waits in line, witnessing the flock, unaware of the crisis unfolding inside the headset until they are the ones that are in the middle of it. It's a cycle that continues until there's nobody left or we're forced to leave the venue. Okay, so we're near the end. Let's reflect together for a moment. How many of you got bored by this presentation? It's okay, put your hands up. Please put your hand down. <laughs> I encourage you to think like a situationist when you leave the theater tonight. Don't feed the algorithm, let yourself drift. Take a different path home on your way home. <laughs> Explore a new street, see where it leads you. A quaint coffee shop, a spontaneous conversation, an unrehearsed moment of beauty. But don't go down the middle of the road. AI created this image and it thinks you don't care about traffic laws in Calgary. <laughs> okay, so, well, that's it. Thanks for listening. Here's how you can find me online. Uh, your thoughts, connections, or a simple hello would mean a lot. Um, and we are doing a free workshop of Awake and Soul Drowning this Saturday at 6 p.m. outside the Big Secret Theater. I'd love to see you there. Otherwise, I hope this helped.